Hi everyone, I'm David Aragona. Welcome to the April 25th edition of Horses to Watch. On the show this week, I'm gonna take a look back at three replays from Aqueduct last week. This was closing week at the Aqueduct before we move on to Belmont Park. I'm gonna take a look at two turf races and one dirt race. We'll begin with the turf events. And this one is from Wednesday, uh, April 17th. It was race seven, a turf sprint at six furlongs, New York bred optional claiming 40,000 or nominators of two other than. And I wanna focus on the number five horse outrageous bet. No going in, this was a race that was pretty paceless on paper. There were no clear front runners, and a horse that was unlikely to be on the lead ended up getting out to the front end and wiring the field. We'll pick it up from the start, and you'll see what happens to our outrageous bet, who's the number five horse, right out of the gate. He just kind of gets squeezed back. He breaks a little bit slowly, but what happened right after that is he got squeezed back between the one and the six horse, and just ends up in last place, about two lengths behind the other two horses ahead of him. Junior Alvarado, who's riding him this day, does the right thing by moving him over to the rail to attempt to save ground heading into that far turn. It is worth noting that this last week at Aqueduct, before the rain came on Saturday, that the rail really was the place to be on the outer turf course. So Outrageous Bet is in the right spot, saving ground as they move into the far turn. But what's going to work against him in this race is that the number two psychic energy who's leading the race was the unlikely leader, but he's going to wire the field. And it, he just never gives any of the other horses a chance to really close into the race. I know that the pace looks fast. 21 and four, and I think they're going to go 44 to the half. But this was a really hard turf course, and they came home very quickly, too. So it was a much slower pace than it seems. And you see right here, outrageous bet towards the back of the pack had nowhere to go as he tried to split the one and the four. Instead, he has to angle inside of horses. He's still never really clear, and he doesn't get that clear path until the final 16th of a mile right here. And he's going to close well to finish second in this race uh, before galloping out decently. I just thought this was a better performance than it seems because no Nobody else made any kind of closing move in this race. It was really just a merry-go-round event. And uh, Outrageous Bet was the only horse to really pass anybody, despite encountering some trouble at the quarter pole. So I think he's a horse that can do better next time. He would gotten into very good form for Gary Contessa last fall, and it seems like he's come back in top form now as a, as a four-year-old. We'll move on to a race on Friday. This was the Memories of Silver Stakes. Uh, it was just a five-horse field of three-year-old fillies going a mile and a sixteenth, also on the outer turf course. Chad Brown had entered two fillies in this race, and the one that was uh, more heavily backed by the public was the number two blowout, and I thought she really should have won this race. This was a trip that I think a lot of people saw, but I want to highlight what happened to this filly. We can pick it up right from the start, and this is yet another race on the turf course that really didn't feature much pace at all. There were no clear front runners in this race, and blowout broke in front of the field, but it seemed like the plan was for her not to be on the lead and to instead let her stablemate Lafeb go out to the front, because Javier Castellano, as soon as she broke on top, easily or quickly reined her in and tried to get her in behind that stablemate. But Lafeb is going to back down the pace quite a bit. You're going to see the opening quarter go up in 25 and change. And Blowout is just going to start to resent the, the fact that they're backing down the pace so much. And Javier Castellano has a real difficult time getting her to settle as they move on to the backstretch. And what's going to happen right here is, as Lafeb continues to back down the pace, uh, Blowout's going to try to run up on her heels, and she's going to clip heels right here. Uh, it was actually uh, kind of miraculous that Javier Castellano was able to stay on her, and that that incident was not uh, any more treacherous than, than it turned out to be, because she easily could have gone down in that situation. Uh, from here, she's going to continue to get a pretty good trip sitting on the rail. She never really settles, though. You can see she's still, she's, she's still see that she's still pretty keen racing under Javier as they move into the far turn. Now, the eventual winner is the number four, Phil Glorious. And I think it's worth watching the difference in momentum between the number two blowout and the number four, Phil Glorious, and what happens at the top of the stretch. Because in slowly paced turf races, what you really want to do is get the kind of trip that Phil Glorious is getting, where she saved ground of the turn, swings out at the top of the stretch, and can pick up that momentum uh, without getting her uh, that it broken at all. Whereas blowout is having to split horses, angle inside. She's never really getting to run straight. She finally does get a clear path here, and she actually shows a really nice burst of speed to briefly take the lead here before Phil Glorious got, uh, runs her down right at the finish. I thought, considering the trip and considering the blowout had to stop and start throughout the race, she actually ran pretty well to be second in this race and probably would have won with a cleaner trip. Blowout's it's a really lightly raced filly. Uh, she's one of these horses that was bought overseas at the Tattersall sale. 
And uh, she just is really moving forward. This was just her third career start. And I think she has real talent and can eventually step up to created stakes races uh, off of this performance. So she's one to watch in the future. Not going to be a huge price, just I think a filly that has some talent. We'll move on to the dirt for the final race that I want to take a look at on this episode. And this was a six furlong race also for New York Breads, uh, an optional claiming 40,000 for nominative to two other than fillies and mares. And there were two horses that I want to focus on in this race. As it has been the theme of this episode, this is yet another race that featured really no pace whatsoever. And as they break from the gate, you can see what happens to the number two, Archie My Baby, and the number three, Sunshine Gal. Now, Archie My Baby actually breaks pretty well in this race, where a Sunshine Gal breaks about a half length slowly. What's going to happen right here, though, you can see Archie My Baby kind of throwing her head up in the air as her rider, Eric Consell, really did not want to have her on the lead in this race for whatever reason. The number four, Shimmering Moon, appeared to be the clear speed on paper, but her ride decided that he wanted to have no separation from the rest of the field. And I think that decision to back down the pace to such an extent created this really bunched group of runners heading into the far turn, and it made for quite a bit of track traffic trouble for the horses in behind Shimmering Moon. You can see Arch My Baby, because she didn't secure that spot inside, uh, gets shuffled back to third here, and that forces the number one Hayfield to get shuffled all the way back to last. Meanwhile, Sunshine Gal is just in between horses and in behind runners, and she's never going to get out from that spot. As you see in the stretch, she's just always going to be boxed in behind horses and never really get to put forth her best effort. Whereas the number two, Archie My Baby, is obviously not comfortable racing inside, and she just continues to get shuffled back at the top of the stretch, whereas other horses are trying to pick up momentum and launch their late rallies. Archie My Baby was actually going in the wrong direction, not because Eric Consell was out of horse, but because he made that decision to take her off the pace at the early in the race and just kept losing momentum from there. Archie My Baby is actually going to finish pretty well in this race on the outside. She's running best of all across the wire. And if you actually watch the gallop out, she gallops out ahead of the rest of the field. So she had more to give in this race than what she was able to do during the race. And I just don't think her trip allowed her to put forth her best effort. For Sunshine Gal, I think it's unclear how much run she really had because she never got into the clear. Uh, Kendra Carmouche was on her, was trying to ride her a little bit in behind horses. I'm not sure if she would have won the race or would have finished in the money with a clearer trip, probably. But uh, I'm not sure how much she had to offer. Whereas Archie, my baby had run a really nice race first off the claim for Gary Gullo, two back, and she didn't follow up that performance in her second start off the claim here, but I think it was really due to her trip. So Archie My Baby is a horse that you definitely want next time out, and uh, Sunshine Gal is a horse that I, I would be careful around because I'm not sure uh, how well she ran in here, but she's another horse that I think you'd want to take a look at. So hopefully we can make a score with one of these horses when they run back in their subsequent starts. Come back next week, and I'll be back with three more trips to highlight. Thanks for listening, guys.